Welcome back to the Dragon Quest VIII walkthrough. I am Vice Elric, and in this part we finally make it to the Dark Ruins to beat Dolmegas at his own game of killing people. Because it's fun. First, I think I'm gonna rest because, uh, yeah, you don't want to go in the Dark Ruins uh, without your stats maxed. Is that you? Huh? Is it really you? Maybe. Who wants to know? Oh, hotness. I don't know, but if it's in my dreams, then you should be naked. It was late, and I was thinking about wanting to talk to you. More talking. What is with this girl and talking? Are we dreaming? We must be. Do you think this is another well, effect of this Well, like I said before, if we were dreaming, you would be naked. I to talk to you about Prince Charmer. I mean, Charmer. What about the fat ass? I think people can change after they get married. I mean, no, people are who they are throughout their whole life. Perhaps mm -hmm. Prince Charles will go out of it too. I doubt it. I think what Charmless really needs is five across the face. And maybe a falcon puncher too. And maybe if I'm really mad at him, a Chuck Morris roundhouse kick. Okay, maybe I shouldn't be so cruel. I mean, he does have some redeeming qualities, like, uh... Um... What? Well, uh, he's... Um... Oh! If you're both falling out of a building, he could break your fall. I, I guess that's good. Anyway, you'll want to put the magic mirror in your inventory. I just put it in the hero's inventory because... I don't know. Because I have nothing better to do, I guess. And putting the Yggdrasil leaf in. Oh, I forgot I had that! Huh. Well, I guess I'll save it for Dolmegas then. Cool. Moving on. To get into the Dark Ruins, you have to change the Magic Mirror into the Sun Mirror. And to do that, you have to use it as an item in battle when fighting the Dragon. The Sea Dragon. Luckily, I was able to encounter him pretty early in sailing. Usually, you have to get right underneath the bridge that gap that uh, connects the two continents, but I got really lucky. I also want you to know that this is my third try uh, getting into the Dark Ruins and completing that part. Because, in all honesty, I got wiped out twice because of my no uh, running away policy. So yeah, I'm not really that pleased about it. I wasted like two hours trying to get in there and survive. Anyway, once you use it as an item in battle, and the dragon uses Giga Flash, the magic mirror turns into the sun mirror. After death, just have Angelo use Whack on it, because it's actually very susceptible to Whack. At most, it will take two tries with Whack to kill it. It doesn't give much EXP, but, nah, who cares. Alright, then just zoom to the Dark Ruins, because walking there would be pointless. Um, however, if you look around enough, uh... There are three ways you can go when you land in the Dark Ruins, like, island thing. And if you go to the right, Far enough, you can find a treasure chest with a uh, with zombie mail, which is useful when combined with Saint's ashes. But there's a there's a roaming monster version of a, of a strong monster in that area, so be careful. Oh, and this pussy. Hey, 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 hey! You should have helped us. Fuck you. Let's put my magic mirror in here. This magic mirror is. Thankfully, more useful than the magic mirrors in Sonic 06. Magic mirror uses. Wait, what is it? Oh, right. Now I remember my gag. Fuck, oh, ruined it though. Oh, well. magic mirror uses magic missile against the darkness. Yes, I went there again. It's super effective. Dark aura is power. Is paralyzed. Dark aura. 
owlized what? It's disappeared. No so you managed to get the Royal Argonian Mirror. Thank you, Captain Obvious. I don't know how you got hold of it, but now we can finally get inside and fight. All right, Lucas. three armed guards are gonna oh, help God. us. This will be awesome. Right. Ah. Uh, well then, I'll just go and fetch my men. You chicken shit, get back here. We need help. You know what? I should have waited for his ass. At nothing. last, at last, we can finish off that despicable Dulmagus. There it is again. Yes, we've been traveling for a long while now. Looking back on all the hard times. That I music stab the right there, the dun, dun, I can't do it well, but you know what I'm talking about. It used to scare the crap out of me when I first got this game. I was like, oh god, I don't want to listen to this music, I don't want to listen to this music. And I was like, nah, dun, I was like, nah. Although not as scary as the Lavender Town music. That, that's just fucking creepy. We'll be waiting here. I'm sure you won't have trouble. Oh my god. Somebody grow a pair and help us out, please. Oh well. Make sure you are well prepared for this area, because it is the toughest you have faced yet. And I actually get lost here because the preview screen on the Dazzle thing is so dark. And actually, this is where I change the brightness of the uh, recording, so I can actually see where I'm going. So, pardon me if it looks a bit hazy. You can still see everything, it's just a bit hazy. But it's not like you can see any less clear, if that makes any sense. The f very first thing you want to do is go through this door and go up the stairs. Let me just go up the stairs. Okay, these guys. This is the roaming monster I was talking to you earlier that's near the zombie mail. Um, these guys have two main attacks. Well, only two attacks. The first attack is a regular attack in which they just charge at you and hit you for moderate to high damage, depending on your level. I mean, look at that. And, uh, their second attack is an even more powerful attack, which... It's like the wind sickle in that your defense doesn't decrease the damage it does. It's really annoying, and if they end up attacking one character, they can probably one-shot them. Use Kabuff if you absolutely need to. I mean, it does decrease the damage by a substantial amount. However, it's a kind of a waste of magic considering how long this dungeon is and how many other uses you could have for that magic. That's another thing. If you have saved up your magic waters, then this is a perfect place to use them because you'll be healing a lot. Anyway, that attack that they used previously is the attack that I was mentioning before that does a set amount of damage. Almost 70. It's really good. And this isn't even... When you go through this dungeon, seeing these guys will be a little breathe a sigh of relief. I mean, really, it's just... I don't know. It, they're one of the weaker enemies in this place. Make use of the heal all feature because it does heal all of your party members in the most efficient way possible. Alright, like I said, go up the stairs and go out this door and make a hard right to find this treasure chest, which has the map. This map is very useful. Because, believe it or not, you will get lost sometimes. But I don't use it for some reason. I guess I just forgot I had it. Okay, these guys. They're like the Phantom Swordsman from the Swordsman's Labyrinth, except they're a bit more resilient to physical and magic attacks. They also hit for a lot harder. Again, if you're under-leveled here, these guys will be a real pain in the ass. Oh, 
my recommended level for coming in here and actually being able to fight off these guys is actually around 29 to 30. It's just so much easier to get through this place at those levels. Also, if you're unprepared, like, for, with equipment and stuff, you won't last long. That really about wraps it up for this part. I am Vice Elric, and I will see you next time. Take care.